Greetings and welcome to the basement. In this video, we're going to take a look at setting up local post processing volumes. Now, in order to do this, you of course have to have post processing set up and ready to go in your project. This means you need to have the post processing package installed. This is not a uh, installed by default package. You will also need to have a post processing layer defined. So this is a continuation of the post processing setup project that I did. And I have a post process layer set up set to the post processing layer, which I have set as layer 31. As I mentioned in the other video, there's nothing magical about either the name or the layer number. That's just where I put the post processing layer. I also have a global post processing volume set up that pretty much just has some minimal color grading on it, some saturation and contrast stuff going on, and a little bit of bloom. Because, I mean, who doesn't like some bloom, right? That's a very subtle effect. Just gives us a little bit of a pink overcast. Uh, ratchets up the saturation a little bit. And of course the bloom causes things like that to happen. Now I have this nice big lake over here. And at the moment, if I go into said nice big lake, nothing really happens. So I walk in and I can look up and see the water above me, and that's about it. Remember my mantra, computers are phenomenally dumb, and they do exactly what you tell them to do. And, well, I haven't told the system to do anything special down there. I want to go for a very basic water effect, uh, just uh, a little... There we go. Yeah, a little blue tint to the screen and uh, a little bit of fuzziness. And I've already got a uh, profile configured for this. This water profile here. It's got some color grading, a very aggressive uh, blue color filter going on. And I'm using depth of field for the blur. A quick rant here. In version one of the post processing stack, Unity had a functioning blur post-processing effect, but in their infinite wisdom, when they moved to the version 2 of the stack, they decided that a blur filter was too specific and specialized and shouldn't be included in the default post-process stack. This decision boggles my mind because blurring things is one of the most common things you do in game development. Why, Unity? Why did you do this to us? So I'm abusing the depth of field post-process effect to create a blur. It's not the best, but it's what we got. Let's get this set up. I'm going to create an empty game object. It's uh, placed over here. And there's a couple of things that I need to make sure this has. Obviously, I'm going to want to make sure that it has a post-process volume. I also need to make sure that it has a box collider on it. The box collider is what determines, well, where the volume actually happens to be. Now, it doesn't have to be a box collider. It can be any type of collider, including a mesh collider. You just have to have some kind of a collider on here defining where this volume exists. It's also probably a really, really good idea to make it a trigger. So that way you can actually walk into the volume. I'm going to size this up a bit here because that's, well, it's a itty bitty little thing, isn't it? Nice and giant and massive. No way I can not walk into that if I walk between these trees here. 
Now notice, even if I unselect the post-processing volume, that big old green square stays there. Now Unity by default is going to always show you in widget form here where your post-processing volumes are. They also have their own little unique icon. Now, if you don't want this, there's two ways you can handle it. My preferred way, oops, and let's call this um, water post volume. So we know what it is. Always want to rename our empty game objects to uh, something more communicative than game object. So I've got my water post volume, and I'm going to come over here, click on the eye, and turn it off. Now, I prefer this method because it tells me right here that I have one thing hidden, or however many things I happen to have hidden, and I can turn it on and off, and, oh, okay, yeah. I can toggle it off. I was like, wait a minute, why aren't you going away? But I'd forgotten I had already messed with the setting. So I can toggle on and off all of my hidden objects. And yeah, it's just a much better workflow, in my opinion. The other way that you can do this, actually, let me leave that on and turn that off, is you can go into your gizmos and you can turn off the gizmo for post processing volumes. I don't like that way as much because there's nothing to remind me now that I have done that. I have to remember that if I want to go in and see post-processing volumes, I have to come in here and turn them back on. Personal preference, if we are to be quite honest. Now, of course, a volume needs a profile. So we'll link that up. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Now, the sharply observant of you will have noticed that I skipped a very important step. And sure enough, nothing happens. I'm definitely inside that volume. Yep, I am most certainly inside that volume. Where am I? Yep, there I am. Yep, definitely inside that volume. So what is going on? Well, remember, a volume has to be on the correct layer. And this volume is still on the default layer. So I need to come in here and change this to the post-processing layer. And now things will work. Walk forward a little bit, and bam, everything goes blurry. Huzzah! Excellent. Post-processing volume is working perfectly. Or is it? Because, I mean, I got a blur. Things are, things are definitely blurred. They're incredibly blurry. Things go unblurry when I get out of the volume. Things go blurry when I go in the volume. I'm not seeing much in the way of blue, though. I mean, that's a pretty aggressive blue I've got in that color filter. I'm not seeing it. Yeah, toggling it on and off certainly doesn't seem to be doing anything. Um, is my color grading just broke? What happens if I turn on post exposure? No. Okay, well, <coughs> post exposure seems to be working just fine. What about U shift? Is U shift working? Yeah, it seems to be working out all right. Contrast isn't working, though. That should be doing something. What, what on earth is going on here? It's like some of my options are working and some of my options aren't. Unity's broke. No, no, Unity's not broke. What's going on here is we have priority clashes. We've got this little priority variable that we haven't messed with yet. So we have this global volume over here, and this global volume also has 
a color filter, saturation, and contrast properties that it has set. So what's happening is when this local volume comes along at the same priority, after the global volume, the global volume is like, yeah, no, 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 I'm more important, so we'll keep my settings, and I'm only going to apply your settings that don't conflict, which is why depth of field works, because the global volume profile doesn't have a depth of field. But that also is why my color filter doesn't work, because the global volume does have a color filter. And how we solve this is by changing the priority. So I'm going to take my water post volume and I'm going to give it a higher priority. And I'm like, you know what? No, I want you to have more priority than the global volume. And the exact number doesn't matter. If you are in a situation where you're trying to layer a bunch of different post processing effects, uh, I would not increase the priority by one. I'd increase it at a minimum by tens, maybe even by hundreds. Uh, the exact number here doesn't matter. It's just whoever has the highest priority is the one that gets the final say on the settings. So I'm going to leave my priority at one. Hit the play button. There we go. That's nice and blue and blurred. That's the effect we're looking for. Finish things off. I move this down here and I'm going to set my scale to be nice and massive. Now, if I was doing this for realsies, you know, I would want to make sure that I can position this in such a way that it's actually going to cover all of the water, but I'm not going to go through that much uh, precision placement for this. And, of course, I'm also going to want to make sure that it's high enough to the surface here that when my character goes in, I get, you know, the water effect. Now, because I'm in a third-person camera mode, there is still going to be some oddities involved. Run over here. And how much you want to fix this is, I guess it really depends on how important this effect is to your game. If this is just sort of a minor, it's like, oh yeah, if you go into water, I want you to have, you know, blurs. You know, maybe not worry about it, but again, it's just going to really depend on the type of the game. So for example, because of the slope here, I can position my camera into the volume and get the blur effect, despite the fact that I'm only just barely in the water. The fact that the water moves also doesn't help very much. And I can also position it so that I am completely in the water and don't have the camera effect. But it works mostly. Like I said, how far down you go, that particular rabbit hole really depends on how important that effect is to you. To use a published game example... Conan Exiles, which I love for the building system, has a similar problem, although it's nowhere near as grievous as this one is. Uh, it has a similar problem where I can rotate the camera down underneath the water and get the water effect, but my character still standing upright and their head's out of the water. Doesn't bother me. Hardly ever even notice it. I actually had to deliberately go into the game and check to see... Does, does this game have this flaw too? Okay, yes, it has this flaw. Okay, great, good to know. It is what it is. So to recap, for a local volume, you of course need the post-process volume component on it. You will also need some form of a collider to define the actual volume. 
you will need to assign a profile and you will need to choose to set the priority based on how you want effects to stack and layer on top of each other. It is also very important to remember to set the game object that all of this is on to the correct layer that you configured with your post-processing layer elsewhere in the project. And that wraps up setting up a local post-processing volume. If you found this video to be useful, a uh, thumbs up would be appreciated. And if this was a waste of your time, well, the thumbs down button is right next to it. Until next time.